Ah, shit. I take it back. Look at that. Oh, Jack, turn on your mic. Come on, Jack Attack. Come to Florida with Rhett. What are we doing here? Can you adopt Jack, please, Rhett? I would, but he's a Steelers honk. I can't have a yeah. Steelers honk in my house. What the he's hell? He's an NFC team, maybe, Jack, but we can't yeah. have multiple conference teams in the same household. Damn it. <sighs> Why did we win last night here for Jack? Yes, that was. It was game of the year. Uh, Penguins are a wagon, Jack told me last night. <laughs> They're getting hot at the right time. And they're up to 18% playoff probability. <laughs> Still need some help there. They got to pass three teams, Rhett, to get in. They got to pass three. Hey, they did what they had to do. Isles, Flyers, Caps, and Wings still above them by points percentage. But they are, uh, are they rolling, Jack? They are indeed rolling. Okay, well, so there you go. They're rolling. I just hope there's enough runway left for them to get in because they did lose to Chicago like the last game of the year last year to be eliminated. What oh, that would be heart wrenching again, wouldn't it, Jack? Who do they play last game? San Jose. I think the last game. <laughs> I think it's Islanders, which might be oh, that could be huge. The and game. they played Detroit as well. You'd said yesterday, yeah. Jack. So it it they basically the teams are chasing. They play. So that's the good news. It's not like well we won out, but they did too. It's like no no no. You you, you got opportunity there. I bet you if they went out and win those games, they control their own fate. I, 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 I got a gut feeling about that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's get right to it. It is our opening thoughts from last night's setback in Winnipeg for the Calgary Flames. These are the McLeod Law opening thoughts. Call Peter Klein at 403-254-3864. Visit mcleod-law.com, and you can follow them on social media at LLP. You know, Peter Klein, of course, the go-to guy for personal injury stuff, but also disability insurance claims. You have any issues there? If your long-term disability insurance company is refusing to pay the insurance benefits to you that you paid for, contact Peter. He'll get those disability benefits you paid for back to you that you deserve. Also, the peace of mind, the peace of mind you paid for. Peter Klein, one of the um, many, I would say dozens of superb lawyers over at McLeod Law, the Calgary Law group. They know what's up in Calgary. They're, they're Calgary did, that, does, that doesn't sound very lawyery. Is it opening thoughts or opening statement? Opening statements. Did I say thoughts? You said thoughts. And I'm like, yeah, lawyers people... shouldn't be thoughting. They should be making statements. So I take that back. Peter, please don't come after me for that. Oh, he's a good guy. Sorry. Don't be thoughting. Be making statements. Rhett, my statement is this Marty Pospisil is going to get to know George Peros very well over the next. Half decade. Can't really control him. I'm not exactly sure which one this is. Um, I yeah, I don't think he went into it thinking I'm going to. Uh, I think it was a reactionary. Oh, I've got a chance to have a big hit. I'm going to yes. take it and then fall mm -hmm. through a little high. Like it, I don't he think leaves it, his feet a little, but let's yeah. watch it again. His back foot is still down at point of contact, and his and again, I, I'm with you. I think it was a. Uh, oh, this guy's cutting back. I'm going to lean into him. Yeah. I don't think it was and, a jump on the ice and I'm gonna I'm looking for this guy and I'm gonna find him and he's gonna get it. I think it was an opportunity that presented itself. He's yeah. the type of player that's gonna take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, I'm right. And he's gonna get dinged for something. Okay. So you just did a freeze frame there, Jack. Can you go put that back up and freeze it right at the point of contact? Because I think this is an interesting one. Um there when you the, the one you just had with the elbow extended looks egregious. And you're like, holy shit, like he was trying to take his head off. But then you back up right to when he runs into him. And feet are on he's, the ice. He's elbows not charging. Josh Morrissey. This, this is the problem we have in today's NHL. And I love Josh Morrissey. I think he's a great player. Would love to have him in Calgary as a flame. Calgary guy. Uh, does charitable work in the community. This isn't a Josh Morrissey statement. This is a player in the NHL in 2024 statement. Guys are not in positions to receive hits anymore. No. And so if you were playing against Scott Stevens and you were in that body posture, you might not be out of your coma yet. My oldest kid started contact this was it last year. It was last year. And so there's two years of contact. Okay. You rarely hear anyone say, don't cut through the middle. I can actually say I've never heard anyone. I don't think that's a clean hit. But I also think 
God, you could have put yourself in a way safer place if you're Josh Morrissey there. 100%. 100%. So, so this is where I have a tough time with Department of Player Safety because we only look at the, the handout end, not the receiving end. But it is still a contact sport. We still want guys running into each other. It's good for the game. It's, it's part of the fabric of the game. It's, it's entertainment. It's contact sport. It's the hypocritic side, Hippocratic, hypocritic, hypocritic, hypocritical. Hip, there you go. Hip, hypnosis. But it's the same as the fighting uh, jersey and the Rangers. You want to see hitting. You want to see the odd scrap. But you yeah. don't want anyone getting hurt. Yeah, it'll never, it'll never be perfect. You never. can't do it. You can't bubble wrap people and play contact sport. There, nope. there is the, people are going to get hurt if you let them run into each other, and we don't want non-contact hockey. We can all agree on that. So I don't know. Maybe it's one. Maybe it's a fine. It's just the freeze frame really tells the story. One frame after, you're like, holy shit, throw the book at this kid. And the one frame before that, you're like, wow, Morrissey really is in a bad spot. Possible skates are on the ice and the elbows tucked at point of contact. It's like, so, okay. I'm, he's not much bigger than Morrissey, but maybe a little, if your head is right here, right on me, mm -hmm. is that my fault or yours? If I'm standing up, I'm not jumping. Well, that's, that's this is what it. George Peros has to figure out. And I don't know the answer. And there isn't. It's George's. It's whatever George comes up with. It's well, not exactly. A, yeah. This is how, you it's know, just in black and white. Have, no. Yeah. They'll try and have some history and look back over things. And I think the thing that's going to hurt Pospisil is that he just got shit. So, Yeah, and I think uh, his last time in Edmund in uh, Winnipeg was a preseason game. He got kicked out of as well for a very blatant elbow. I think it was on Perfetti, perhaps. Um, that was a preseason game. He got punted from the game in Boston after coming in with that high cross check on Marchand, who was whacking away at Markstrom. I think there's another game he's been ejected from. So if you include preseason, that's four this year. Yeah. He just had the suspension. Yeah. So he's not going to get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to Yeah, and I think uh, people talk about it. They they try to send messages to young players in the league to let them know what's okay and what's not. Um, and I think the refs have been know. doing that. I think the refs have been doing that. I think. Yeah, well, and, and George has as well. Yeah. 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 It's what it is. Marty, you're it gonna, is what it is. It's the style of game you're going to play, and you're going to miss a few games throughout your career. Yeah, yeah, and it's getting to that spot where, huh? What's the example of, I want to give you? Like, if there's a certain player on the ice, you got to fucking know if they're there. Mm -hmm. You got to know when certain players are on the ice, and I think Pospisil has cr crossed over into that space where other teams will have on the whiteboard seventy six on the, on the ice. Keep your head up, like be careful. Head up. Here. Hundred percent, and I'd rather have one of those guys than zero of those guys. I know that, but you're you said it like it's going to happen the way he plays. He's gonna he's gonna have the odd suspension here or there, and that's uh, as Flames fans and as a team, you probably just have to accept that, and you're fine with it because you'd rather it on your squad than somebody else. Yes, yeah, you'd rather that be uh, you know your guy throwing the hit than Oliver Shillington getting folded by Pospisil a jet for sure. Hot, absolutely. Okay, so, I mean, we didn't really talk about the result. The Flames did lose, Rhett. I, I think um, what we continue to see is that they're icing a below NHL caliber portion of their roster. Uh, they will Watch. have a better decor next year. They'll have more than two top four defensemen, I imagine. I and uh, I, I didn't mind the effort. Nope. And I didn't think Dustin Wolf was bad, even though he let four. I think he was above 900 on the night because he plays, he faced 40 plus shots. <laughs> Wolf was um, fine, but they don't have the skill level that the Jets yeah. have. The Jets got the puck on their stick, and they made some plays. Like, uh, not to pick on Rooney, but the Rooney has the, they're on a three on one on the yeah. penalty kill. And he gets a shot on net. Is it a bad play? No. You know what the Jets do? They have a backdoor tap in. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. They, they just yeah. have a more skill. And Rooney's not a great example of a skill player anyway. But when the Jets got the puck and they zipped it around on the power yeah. player in the offensive zone, you're like. Oh yeah, I see. Yep. I, I see why they can have some success. I see how they're regarded as having skill and gifted. Flames don't have that. They just no. don't. When it's, the Flames it's a good play, point. and they played. They played hard. And what we, it's like you said it. It's like they have to play their asses off, which most teams do. But they have to play their asses off and have all the bounce go right. Yep. All the bounces have to. All the plays, the scoring opportunities, they have to score on them because they don't get an abundance of them because they don't have the talent. They, uh, it, it's been a bit of a miserable, miserable run on the schedule. And I know Boom was talking about it about two, three weeks ago. Like, geez, you know, 
whatever you're watching here. I can't, this is going to be a nightmare. Guys are going to quit. What are these veterans doing? Like you worry about the culture, all that stuff. And you know, I don't, I don't think it's nothing, but I do think it gets overblown and I'm looking, they've lost seven of eight. They've generally worked hard and been fine. They're just outskilled. And that's what happens when you delete a second pair and you roll two to three waiver claims in your lineup on, on the blue line, like a ho chick, Hanley, Pahal. Which of those guys is a surefire NHLer next year? Oof. None of them for me. Nope. Nope. Amir Manov, maybe, but he's only played 29 games the last three years. He's getting 20 <laughs> plus a night. Yes. I was uh, just like, this say. is what it looks like when you're kicking tires on, on guys just to see what they are. That You don't know they're NHLers. You're giving them ice to see if they can be. And, and they've given you some resounding answers that. I think a lot of these guys could be six sevens. I don't know that anyone said, yeah, I'm a number three here. Sign me up. You know, play the way you did last night because you did have the effort and it was your talent level and team skill that dictated the outcome. But yeah. Nothing to do with they didn't show up. And I'm fine. No, with and even against the Anaheim, I like the I the coach didn't like their effort, so it wasn't it wouldn't have been as good. But LA they played hard. St. Louis have I games they got some shitty as, bounces yeah. and they were outworked St. Louis in a lot of aspects. They had the two overturned goals. Chicago is a bit of a dog. Buffalo, they're right there the whole night. And then finally Tage goes off late. Vancouver, they worked hard. They were just out skilled. Like I, I don't have a lot of problem with the way this group's going. And I think all this great what if, what if, what if the vets are working. I don't see guys going through the motions. I don't see people quitting. It was funny. We had baseball tryouts for the boys a couple of days ago. And it was the exact place where Nazem Kadri had that shift last year that was maybe the worst I've seen from a pro in the NHL. And he's had a great year and a feather in the cap to Nazem Kadri, who's, who's turned in another really rock-solid season and has embraced the role he's been given on this team. But that game last year, I was at the same building for the same tryouts in the same room. And I, as soon as I walked in, I'm like, oh, my God, this was a year ago. I remember that shift. This group is less skilled than that group. This group is so much easier to watch and so less frustrating than last year's group. Oh, absolutely. How many times did we freak out last year? Because it yes. was like, you didn't even show up. You didn't even, like, it, it wasn't that you lost. It was that you didn't compete or even try. There yeah. was plenty of that. And even the start of the year, I was concerned the same thing was happening. Seven games in, you're like, I don't know about all this. But they, they, I don't question their work ethic most nights. Are you going to have yeah. some dogs? Yeah, there's 82 bloody games. It mm -hmm. happens. For the most part, they've been committed into the games, played with intensity, had determination. That's uh, not an issue. Keep yeah. and, and keep playing that way. Play yeah. real hard. Let us be happy with your effort. Continue to evaluate players. Guys can show stuff and lose. Yep. Great recipe for the next six, seven games, whatever's left. Yes, and we'll be uh, introducing a new feature in the Pinder Report today right along uh, those lines, something that will come to fruition in, in early May. So we'll let that marinate until we get there. Uh, those are your opening statements from McLeod Law. Shane King is a partner in the Litigation and Dispute Resolution Group, specializing in areas like employee rights. Being laid off or terminated can be hard. Shane can review your situation and make sure you've been treated fairly and as the law requires, using a practical approach and plain language, not legal jargon or mumbo jumbo plain language i like yeah mumbo -jumbo, thoughts thoughtful right language. up here thoughts mm -hmm. lots of thoughts yeah statements that's yeah there we are uh again reminder mcleod law proud of their calgary roots it's part of their long-standing client relationships i understand the city the people in it and the way things work mcleod dash law.com okay Jack, if you had a million bucks, would you go fly to visit Rhett? Or would you be off to watch the, the Pirates a hot start? Are you going to watch the Penguins wrap up hmm. uh, Final Four for the men's tournament? What are you doing if you win a million bucks? A million bucks. Need to know. I'm going to Hawaii. Oh, that's a veteran move. Rhett, what can you tell them about Hawaii? You been to Hawaii, Jack? No. Okay, Rhett, unload. You're going to love Hawaii, Jack. <laughs> Private jet over to Hawaii. That's right. A private PJ. Wow. What is it? It's a long the, flight for a PJ. You get the lay when you land there. They can see the flower, mm. a little lay on you. And then they see the pineapple drinks. And oh, you're going to oh, love man. it. Great and it's waves. just. Uh, you're such a surfer, too, Jack. You're going to love the waves. Yeah. yeah. 
It is the service big share back for the sixth year. It's your chance and Jack's as well to win a million dollars just by saving money. Anyone uh, can enter by just becoming a member at service and saving. Every 500 bucks you move over gives you five entries into the service big share contest. And there's lots of different places you can earn your entries. You can save in a daily banking account. You can put money in a high yield savings account, fast track those savings. Also invest in a GIC, save in a TFSA, put some cash in an RRSP. All those things will qualify you. Contest ends at the end of April. Skill test required for rules. Visit service.ca slash win. Make sure you transfer your existing savings to service. It's chances to win $1 million. The PJ over there, that's, that's going to be more expensive than you think because the PJ in North America is, it's like, okay, how many hours? How far are we going? Yeah, but Jack, you got that money. You might as well spend it, buddy. No sense hanging on to it. How much is a PJ? Ooh. Well, they're different sizes. I uh, I would like to suggest if you had eight seats and you wanted to go to somewhere like Vancouver and back, that might be twenty grand. Oof. And no luggage. Uh, minimal. Yeah, you're, you're. I mean, but you got a PJ. Who cares? But you don't have to go. You wait in lines. No, it's but just if like, you when, when do you want to leave, sir? When do you want to yeah, leave? But if you, Let us know. If you load up the plane with luggage, you can only take, you got to take less people. It's a weight. Yeah, it's a weight thing. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii would be 30K go. minimum. More than that. Come on now. Round trip, Chad. Think about it. Take Chad to the shed with that take. Way more than 30K. Get out of here. It's probably not worth a check. Just fly first class, buddy. First class. Yeah, buddy. that's a move. Yeah. Yeah. Go Get front of the seats. bus. Get two seats. That's what Did I Did you do. tell, does Jack know the story? Was it Hawaii? <laughs> Was it Hawaii? Yeah. Yes, it okay. was. Rhett, please tell us what happened. Well, I don't know. It's Jack, it's a very long flight. And a lot of the yeah, flights yeah. returning to the to the mainland are overnight or red eyes. And yes. so mm-hmm. and they're always jammed because Hawaii is beautiful and everyone wants to go there. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't have a first class seat because I was not paying for five for my skid children to have first class. Right. And they were young enough. So instead of buying a first class for five, I bought myself two seats. Two seats. Yeah. How did check-in go? Uh, check-in went fine, which is odd because I tried to fly back from Hamilton to Calgary once and I mistakenly booked two seats and they called right. me an idiot and took my money. Yes. Yeah, that's a bad combo. You can't have two seats. I'm like, you're keeping my money. It seems like I paid for two. I have very long arms. I need two seats. Do yeah. you not see what you're dealing with here? Anyway, <laughs> Boomer was appalled. Yeah, yeah, that got right up in his in his jealousy department right there. Mm-hmm. You didn't like it. Not all. happy. Yeah, it's okay. You weren't there, Boom. It doesn't affect you. It's all good, buddy. All good. Uh, we are expecting our NHL insider in about a couple of minutes' time. Jack, you just give me the wave when. Uh, when that happens, Darren Dreger and the usual Friday, we have uh, playoff hockey two weeks and a single day away. How good is that? How good is that? Well, it makes life real nice. On the couch, real nice. bucked corn. Oh, going to be. And it's, is it snowing like, like nuts there? It, uh, it's just, it's snow globing. It's it's not crazy really? heavy, but it just doesn't stop. It's, it's just, just yeah. It's lovely. It would be a nice Christmas Eve snow. Yeah, it did. It, it is good Christmasy vibes. Yeah, for sure. Here, it's a little harder to watch sporting events where it's very nice, and to see uh, palm trees waving in the breeze and you're over your right shoulder there. That was yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. painful because it was uh, family day long weekend. What was that like three weeks ago where we just had twenty degrees and you're like, oh, winter's over. That's great. Yeah, mid Feb. Yeah. There's been a foot and a half of snow since then. Well, farmers do. Keep the farmers happy. Are they ever happy? It's too wet or it's no. too dry. I don't know. Yeah. Only happy farmers I've met are over at Origin Brewing at Strathmore. Because they got the good guys. beer they make with that barley. Huh? Well, I don't mind uh, celebrating some things. Let's do this. Origin uh, is updating every week the places you can find the Barn Burner Blonde. That is our beer. It is the best blonde in the city. I'm uh, sticking to it. I am not... Uh, quibbling. I'm not. Uh, I'm not wavering. It is absolutely an amazing beer, crushable, delicious. Here's where we can find it. Let's look in Alberta. 
Rocky View Liquor Discounter, Wine and Beyond and Airdrie, 7-Eleven Liquor. 11-Eleven, excuse me, that makes more sense. 11-Eleven Liquor. I didn't know 7-Eleven. can't do that. Maybe in the States, eh, Jack? Uh, Five Vines on Bow Trail in Calgary. Five Vines in Mahogany in Calgary. BK, our boy, Man Deep, up by Windsport. BSW Liquor, also Co-op in Auburn Bay. Love to see that. Global Liquors, Legacy Liquor, Legacy Liquor uh, in Panatella Boulevard. Don't know where that is. 17th Ave as well. And then Metro Liquor Store as well. Go get yourself the Triple B, the Barn Burner Blonde, and get stocked up for the weekend. It's it's going to be a great origin weekend. There's oh. another page there. Oh, my God. Look at all this. Wine and Beyond in Lethbridge. We're in Lethbridge. The Naughty I Grape and Okotoks. Rivers Liquor Store in Peace River. Wine and Beyond Emerald Hills in Sherwood Park. Spruce View at the Spruce View Liquor Store. Wine and Beyond in St. Albert. Crystal Ridge Liquor Store in Strathmore. Yeah, baby. Sobeys in Strathmore. Westview Co-op in Sundry. And Highway Liquor in Vulcan. Oh, baby. They're big Star Wars fans. This goes on forever. we got more and more and more. Look at this. I want you to find the one near you. Tell them thanks for bringing in the Origin and the Barnburner Blonde. And uh, buy out the shelf. Go get it. All right. We've got our guest waiting. He does not need to hear about beer he cannot buy in uh, the Ontario area. Let's get to our TELUS Insider Hotline. We do that three days a week for our good friends at TELUS. TELUS is the most giving company in the world, and they've been partners with the Calgary Flames since 2005. Of course, they have that TELUS skater program where you can see kids zipping out and doing warm-ups with the players, and they're the title sponsor of the Premium Club at the Saddle Dome, the TELUS Club. TELUS uh, also giving away prizes. You can uh, enter to win. Fill out a quick survey at telus.com slash flames contest. AirPods, Apple Watches, tickets to hockey games, things like that. Telus.com slash flames contest. Let's get to Darren Dreger of TSN. One of our insiders on a Friday. It is snowing. It is around zero. It was uh, fall on the ground and melt, then freeze, then snow on top of it. It, it was a straight, disgusting Ontario winter day here today. Yeah. Dreger. Yeah, no, it's not great. It's not no. great. Um, I was in the Okanagan Valley for the weekend, just tending to some family business. And oh. uh, by Monday, we left Wednesday morning. Monday was like 20 degrees. And yeah. I'm looking around. Now, I, you guys have probably, I don't think you've done this. We spent, oh, look at that. Look at Rhett's. Rhett's in uh, Fort Lauderdale, I believe, this past yeah. week. Son of a. Fantastic. Yeah. Is that a. Margarita. We spent uh, Tuesday night because we're flying back to Toronto Wednesday morning out of Kelowna uh, at Sparkling Hill, which is right above the Predator Ridge Mecca of Vernon. Gulf. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I've been to Predator Ridge in the past. It's not even open yet, but yeah. you get the picture of how fantastic it's going to be. Come back to Ontario. And yeah, it's been nasty uh, since we got back. So here's what it is. You said you were attending to family business. How is Dreger Estates Winery doing? What's happening out there? <laughs> How are the 2024s coming along? Yeah, yeah. Coming along slowly. That's how they're coming along. But uh, I learned oh. I did spend some time with some wine people there. Um, and I, I I, like to drink wine, but I'm far from a wine aficionado. I don't okay. really understand all of it. But I learned some things. Now, again, if you're familiar with the Okanagan Valley, and I think you guys are, mm -hmm. you know, and and you know, you watch the news, and sadly, you see the wildfires that come through there every year, or every other year. I mean, it's devastating. I, this is common sense, but it wasn't to me. Okay. I had no idea of just the smoke effect on the wine business, oh, and not just fun, how, yeah. yeah, it blocks the sun, so you've got yeah. some growing issues. But how the wine actually saturates the grape and you get like a, a sour smoke flavor in no certain way. situations. I had no idea that would happen, but so a smoky vintage, else. perhaps you could buy. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. Let's We're learning things. things there. There, so, yeah. uh, I want to learn something. What are your plans for Monday? For Monday? Well, we got the big know. eclipse coming near us, don't oh, we? Like oh. we gotta get dialed in here. Like Okay, so uh, I have a very good veterinarian because I've got a great Dane who requires constant care. So it's like every time this dog goes to the vet, which is once a month, it's four or five hundred bucks. Jeez. So you can appreciate why the vet would have me on speed dial. Yeah. I got a reminder to keep the dog out of the eclipse. Do not let the mm. dog outside while the eclipse because they don't have eye protection. They don't have eye protection. 
you know, we're, we're smart enough uh, to wear the protection or whatever. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to take advantage of any of it. But yeah, heads up. Don't let your dogs stare up at the uh, the eclipse. I had, ne- I had not thought about that. We, someone needs to invent sunglasses for dogs, drugs. Then we can all quit these jobs, <laughs> buy islands, live in the Okanagan, whatever we want. Yeah. It's like the movie, The Jerk. You remember The Jerk way back in the day? You guys probably aren't old enough for that. Steve Martin. And he invented this thing that just held your glasses up. So it was a bridge between the middle of your glasses to your nose. Yeah. And his dog's name was S-H-I-T head. Oh, shit head. Lovely. Yeah. (laughs) It's French. Don't be confused. Uh, Okay. So we got to go. (laughs) <laughs> 13 days left in the regular season man okay. we, we, we go through the schedule every day and we're like banger not a banger there's been some unbelievable games we've seen a lot yeah. of these top seven eight nine teams in the league clashing yeah. what have we, we learned and how do we handicap uh what's to remain there's still lots to fight for in terms of seating and battles yeah. there's not many teams stuck in matchups that aren't going to change no uh you know i i didn't expect that the east would be as tight as it is now with you know, half a dozen games remaining for the most part. I really didn't. I mean, you know, a month ago, you know, you always expect some jockeying, some movement. Um, but now you've got probably three or four or five different scenarios that could unfold. I'm watching Tampa Bay Lightning play, you know, terrific hockey of late. And it starts with Nikita Kucherov. And Stamkos looks like, you know, he's in vintage form. Nikki Paul has come alive here of late. You've got elite level goaltending in Tampa Bay. They're two points back of Toronto in the Atlantic, and they're scaring the bejesus out of a lot of teams in the East because with the winning pedigree and the experience of being a Stanley Cup champion, I think you can appreciate if you're a playoff team in the East, you really don't necessarily want to tangle with the Tampa Bay Lightning when they've got some momentum building. So you've got that side of of what's going on now, and then you've got everything that's going on at the bottom of the conference. Um, Imagine... You know how fun it's going to be. At least I think it will be. If Sidney Sidney Crosby wills the Pittsburgh Penguins into the playoffs, wouldn't it be great? So like, Jack, our producer, is a yeah. huge Penguins honk. Yeah, and they got up four nothing on uh, Colorado a couple weekends ago. Yeah, Penguins are a wagon. They're back. This is their rally. They're making the playoffs, <laughs> and they get absolutely stomped by Colorado. They blow the four nothing lead or whatever it was. And I was like, sorry, Jack, not your year. But they've no. gone really well since then, and they find themselves not in, but playing the teams they need to pass and yeah, all of a agreed. sudden striking distance away. Yeah. I, I mean, you look at their remaining schedule and it is against teams that they need to beat. And in certain situations against teams that they're contending for a playoff spot with. But I mean, the reason I'm I'm so captivated by this idea, and now somebody's going to have to dip out. And if mm-hmm. it's somebody, it feels like it's going to be the Philadelphia Flyers. So we'll, Could be. we'll see how that plays out. Um, but I can tell you, and, and Ray Ferraro and I just taped our podcast you know, an hour or so ago. And he talked about the games that he did. He broadcast to the Penguins, you know, right after the trade deadline. And he said the sourness from that group was palpable. Like Mm. you could feel it. You can almost taste it. Just, you know, it it was like, you know, okay, directionally, Sidney Crosby, Chris Letang, Evgeny Malkin, Carlson, go down the list of all these good Penguins players. Did not want... Iota agree with the direction of Kyle Dubas and and the group to trade Jake Gensel to a rival in the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, in fairness, Dubas and management, you know, Calgary did something similar. I mean, you can't let these players walk for nothing into free agency. You can't. Yep. Um, you know, you can gamble. You can use that player as an own rental. Um, maybe you roll the dice, you take your chances, you move other pieces if things go well, and you keep Gensel, who wanted to stay evidently in Pittsburgh. So now you've got Crosby on this heating run. And again, it's almost like he's throwing the organization on his back and defying the direction of Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, are they capable? Yeah, I, they're, they're, they're 100% capable of qualifying for the playoffs, but they're going to need help. They look after their own, but they're going to need help with some of those teams that are still kind of tackling in that Metro division and then in the wild card spots remaining in the East as well. So, and, and maybe Dubas could win this thing both ways. Maybe they get in, which would be miraculous, and they can bring back Gensel in the summer. Because if he wants to be in Pittsburgh, sure. all yeah. the reasons you want to be in Pittsburgh will still be there this summer. Yeah. And then you've restocked the cupboards, you've added some picks, and you get Gensel back. But that that is tough because the GM's got to do what's best for the team. And that mm-hmm. locker room, 
wants to just win at all costs. Screw next year. Screw two years from now. Screw five years from now. We got to win. Uh, and that, you're, that, you're, you're, tough. you're also going into an off season and, and broaching the final year of Sidney Crosby's contract with mm-hmm. the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I think we'd all agree. Uh, I haven't found anyone who disagrees yet. Sidney Crosby has been wildly underpaid pretty yep. much his entire career. Pretty yes. much. So, you know, okay. <laughs> what's a contract for Sidney Crosby look like if he's willing to say, okay, I'm staying, I'm going to retire as a Pittsburgh Penguin. Eh, I don't know. Like, what does that look like? It's not 8.7 million. It's not unless it's grossly front loaded <laughs> and it's a long term that he's never going to get to near the end. I don't know. Maybe he just, you know, he doesn't retire, but you know, his, his body breaks down in year five of the contract. Mm-hmm. extension and and he's able to get paid out on on that side of the equation it's just there's so, there's just one wall after another for Kyle Dubas moving forward with this penguins team so i guess they need to enjoy it while they're in it we'll see how far it goes yeah it's not the exact same as austin matthews who resigned earlier this year but i mean sydney Crosby writes his own ticket here, doesn't he? He goes where he wants to go. He plays where he wants to play. He makes what he wants to make. Who's going to say no to this guy? You move heaven and earth to get this guy. He's 37 this summer, but he's still an elite top 10 player in the league. Agreed. Agreed. And, you know, everybody wants to to connect into the Colorado Avalanche. And, I mean, it's obvious because of the relationship and the history to some degree with Nathan McKinnon. Um, You know, there wouldn't be many players who don't want to go to Colorado and I would include Crosby. But, again, we need to see how this thing plays out. And, yeah. you know, if, if they don't qualify for the playoffs, and I've said it on the show before, um, the, the exit meetings, the, the end-of-the-year interviews, uh, there is going to be none more compelling than that one with Crosby. Because mm-hmm. for me, I've been doing this a long time, if he says, no, I'm staying in Pittsburgh, I'm not, we're, we're not having this conversation. We've got another year left on my contract. Okay. No problem. You know, he's deferring until the end of the year, which puts more heat on Kyle. What the hell is Kyle Dubas going to do with Sidney Crosby in the final year of his contract? I mean, come on. Um, You know, so there's that. But if he says, look, I'm going to, I'm going to leave. I I just need some downtime here. I need to talk to my friends. I need to talk to my family. Mm -hmm. Then that door just Hangs open with wild speculation in the offseason as to what Dubas might do or what Crosby might allow Kyle Dubas to do in the offseason. Well, I'm not sure if it was you last week or somebody else, but if they miss or it's an early exit, yeah, it's an Olympic winner next winter, and this World Championships would be one where I imagine, or should, yeah. I should say it's Four Nations next year, um, this would be the World Championships where Hockey Canada does have some more leverage on getting guys to go places. That, that Correct. probably opens up options and relationships and ideas about other places other than Pittsburgh. But I, I just don't know how you quarrel with the legacy piece. Uh, how, how, how could Sidney Crosby way wearing another Jersey? I don't even know. Like, right. We talk about it. It can be so overblown. And then other times you're like, man, it's right there, Johnny. Like you went to Columbus, you were going to have all the records. Your, your right. number was going to the rafters. Like yeah. you could show up for no less than five, 10 grand to write your name on stuff. Anytime you wanted in Calgary, you gave that yeah. all away when you left. Like, I, I just don't know how that equation goes. Yeah, I'm with you. And then I'm reminded by, you know, older guys that say, well, come on, Wayne Gretzky got traded to the Los Angeles Kings. So, you know, the great players in the game can change jerseys. Yeah. Okay, but but Wayne Gretzky wasn't nearing the end of his career at that point, right? Yeah. He was very much in the prime of his career when he went to the Los Angeles Kings. So, and it was a different set of, of circumstance. Um, you know, maybe if you go back to the Mario days, and again, that's different because Mario at the time had partial ownership and he was simply protecting uh, an investment. Yep. But if Mario had been dealt at that point, that's more of a comparison to me to Wayne Gretzky getting traded from Edmonton to Los Angeles than Sidney Crosby now potentially going to another team. I, I'm with you, though. I, I, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. But I've been in this business long enough again to know that the possibility is there until Sidney Crosby says it isn't. How do you uh, unpack that, Rhett? That whole one jersey for a career thing versus, hey, I, I I'm looking around. I don't see a chance to win a cup. I've only got so many years left. Like, yeah, w- what would you advise a pal, or what does that make you think of? I I think it all changes too, though. I mean, Sid's so different than everyone else. He's won cups. He's had long runs. I, 
I was, when you guys were talking, I was going to jump in and say something that really was useless to say. Whatever he decides to do, we should all support. Yeah, I'm with you. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this guy has earned whatever right. If he wants to stay in Pittsburgh for 500 grand and league minimum, good Agreed. for him. What the hell am I going to tell him? Like, he's yeah. done it all. He can do it all. If he wants to go yeah. to Colorado, if he wants to go to Russia, it's not yeah. our. It, we can speculate all we want. Yeah. I, but to answer your question, Everybody's built different Pinder. Yeah. I mean, Rob yeah. Ray was a career Buffalo Saber. He mm -hmm. was not going to win a cup in Buffalo. Ottawa showed interest. They were a good team that year. He's like, I want to win a cup. I, it's yeah. more important to win a cup than play for the same city. So mm -hmm. everyone's got different opinions and everyone's a different spot. Mm -hmm. I just think that whatever we do, we applaud Sidney Crosby's <laughs> this decision because mm -hmm. you watch him right now, you're in awe of what he's going out there and doing. I'm Drake, the, the I don't know how much of the Flames you saw. It probably wasn't the top of the list. Uh, Jets look good. Uh, Flames yeah. have struggled, but aren't not you know they're not half-assing it. They're just missing a lot of skill and they're rolling out a lot of six, seven, eight, nine defensemen. Uh, did you see the Marty Pospisil elbow? And what do you think of that collision with Josh Morrissey? Yeah, no, I I saw it. I didn't see it live. I saw it on on replay. Carlson awesome Company have looked at a hundred times by yeah. now. Um, it also feels, and I haven't looked at the Department of Player Safety X feed here. I mean, they haven't called a hearing, have they? I haven't heard anything yet. So, no. here, and really quickly, while we got it yeah. up, this is point of contact. Yeah. Elbows yeah. tucked, skates tucked. on the ice. Yeah. But then two frames later, you're like, holy shit, he blew him up with an elbow. Like, it, I yeah. don't know how they dissect this stuff. This is a really tough job. That's for me where they would start the analysis. And it would be point of contact. Yeah. And now Morrissey gets rid of that puck immediately because he knows what's coming. He's yeah. about to get popped and he knows it. And you can see that Morrissey, um, you know, again, he's lowered himself, you know, to, to get exit the zone, to make a play, to whatever, to do whatever he, he's going to do in that moment. He is allowed to be hit there. Yeah. He's allowed to be hit there. I honestly, I didn't have a problem with it. And again, that, that freeze frame that we saw, you can see that Possible Soul has got that that left arm tucked yep. as Morrissey's head is hitting the elbow upper arm. So I don't think – look, I, I feel like if there was anything coming from the Department of Blair Safety, we'd probably have heard by now. That's normally what happens when you get to midday in the east. You normally hear these things. So without checking, my gut tells me that that was a good clean hit. And everybody, um, especially the Winnipeg Jets, hopes that Josh Morrissey is okay. Yeah, and I'm just going to scroll and make sure we haven't seen anything yet. I, I, nothing's popped up in my feed in terms of it. Uh, do, what, what would – like, here's the thing. He's been kicked out of four games if you go back to the preseason. Uh, yeah. In Winnipeg, there was a bad elbow. High stick on Marchand. He just finished serving a three-game suspension. And then last night, he gets punted as well. Uh, you 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 said I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. That's where I wonder about maybe the power player safety isn't going to give him the benefit of the doubt. The guy hasn't played 60 games yet, and yeah. he's look at he's had four ejections, including the yeah. season. So here's what happens in in that scenario. And again, this is just history, you know, educating me in this. I'm not saying yeah. this has happened. Um, normally, I think what would happen is if it's real close and it's great, but they are willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, despite a developing record here, he might get a call from someone in the Department of Player Safety. Normally, it would be the head, George Barrows, you know, but it could be somebody else inside that crew that would walk him through that play. Maybe, maybe send him the video link and maybe Craig Conroy is on the call to walk him through and say, OK, um, this hit is fine, obviously, or we'd be having a different conversation. We would call a hearing, either a conference call or an in-person hearing if we th thought it was egregious. Mm -hmm. You're really close to the line, and here's why you're close to the line. Um, so just be mindful of that. Yeah. We're not necessarily giving you the benefit of the doubt because you haven't earned that, but you also didn't fully cross the line, and we can't elevate it to supplemental discipline, but you're damn close. Yeah. So maybe take a different path or try something different in the future. It does feel like the whole thing's gray area. Like that's yeah. we everyone gets outraged by the outcomes of a lot of these things. But I mean, put yourself yeah. in Peros's shoes. That's a tough fucking job to to do that well, one. There, it's a crazy, terrible job. And, job and one thing, 
Yeah. It is. And, and just, you know, and, and not that I'm here to defend George. doesn't matter to me is I I'm as confused as anybody when it comes to how they come up with the numerical position on some of these suspensions. And, okay. I, you know, and, and it, 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 it pisses the people off the Department of Player Safety when we ask these type of questions or there's criticism directed at them because they say that they go through a very methodical process. One thing I will say about Paris, and I just saw it at the general manager's meetings, he probably had 40 conversations. Really? Face okay. to face. Hmm. And they're not all heated. Don't get me wrong. But there were a couple of managers that took a run at him at those meetings in Florida. No doubt about that. But he stands in there. And, and he's not afraid to take the heat because, you know, the criteria that they use was criteria that was in part established by the general managers and right. certainly endorsed by the general managers. So you can't live in your own bubble when you're pissed off at the Department of Player Safety. You've got to look at it from a macro perspective and mm -hmm. not a micro perspective. But Peros is always there, man. He stands in there and he defends and he's open to criticism and he's he's willing to admit when he's wrong as well. Yeah, I don't think you can hire a guy if they're not ready to do that. It's just too hot yeah. of a position. Uh last yeah. one for you. Yeah. Uh this the the points race, the Art Ross chase is is interesting. Kucherov, is. three more last night. He's at 133 points. Yeah. With six games to go. McKinnon had three points, I believe, last night as well. He's at 130 with six games to go yeah. four back of him is McDavid. McDavid's got eight <laughs> games to go. So he's got two games in hand on McKinnon and Kucherov and he's respectively four and seven points back. Who is yeah. your horse? If you had to pick one, uh, Nikita Kucherov, uh, he's just been so consistent to this point. And I should know this number. I know it's in the twenties, It like 23 games comes to mind. That's how many three point games Nikita Kucherov has had this year. The 21, I think it was. Someone, is it? Uh, okay, NHL so PR two, it's one less and than McDavid had a couple of years ago. It's crazy. It, it's bonkers. It's yeah. it's bonkers. And it's it's saying a lot when you look at the company that he's keeping in, in Nathan McKinnon and uh in, in Connor McDavid. It just it feels right now that the lightning, as we you know, sort of started the conversation with, have got something special moving right now. And he's yeah. such a, a, a big part of that. So beyond the art Ross, though. Where and I'm going to throw one back at you guys. Okay, sure. Where would would Crosby be in the heart conversation for you? And if you were voting, <sighs> where would he be? I haven't watched enough Penguins, but the, the game we saw, he wasn't great here in Calgary. That's one. So I just don't know. I think it's remarkable yeah. given his age and his career. Yeah. But if you're telling me he's had a better season than Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid, I'm saying he isn't. He right. hasn't. No, I would so, agree with that. I would agree. Is with it that, a reputation but, thing? Like, has he not got enough hearts? I feel like I hear some people that have votes <laughs> talking about it, and they they factor in shit they shouldn't. Right. Say, oh no, right. this guy got four. I got to and it's like, well, no, Phil Kessel is either your consmite or he isn't. Like, don't right. tell me about right. people's legacies. Pick the best yeah, player. And every market feels different too. Yeah. Brett, what do you think? I think if he leads him into the playoffs, he's got to be part of the conversation. I just don't know yeah. if he's established himself as a front runner for it. No, yeah. he wouldn't be a front runner. I would agree with that. I just, you know, the guy who has to vote for it on an annual basis, I I take pride in putting those five names on that page. So yeah, he'd be one of the five. I, I'd give you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Norris Trophy, I'll just tell you a quick sidebar here. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, you could probably guess at the guys that I use, but historically I have used X Norris Trophy winners as a panel and I check in with those guys oh, no on a quarterly basis because when you win the Norris, it shouldn't be about having the most points. It should be, okay, how good were you in the first quarter of the season? Mm -hmm. How good were you in the third quarter? And then you wrap up the year at the end of it. That's how I go through all my all my five ballot selections. That's a, that's interesting. I see Quinn Hughes in a runaway. Do you see it closer? Like, do you, is, it, is it a tough decision for you? Because Quinn's had a monster year and just the, time, the amount of time that – the pucks on his stick just dwarfs everyone else in the league at that position. Yeah, I mean, as we're having this conversation, he he's my front runner. Um, I'm not yet in a position to say runaway, but yeah, right. he'd be a, he'd be my front runner. He would be. Yeah. And I got to check with my ex Norris Trophy winning right. Hall of Famers. Before Plus, I Rhett, could you ask Rhett? Because Rhett yeah, got yeah. snubbed. He I got screwed off that, some uh, Team Canada. He should have gone to the Olympics. I was sure I was going to uh, log <laughs> Noggin. I was just, I was positive I was going to be on the <laughs> list, Drake. <laughs> the they could have used you in the of, shootout. Yeah, the confidence <laughs> of you. <laughs>
<laughs> Mark Crawford. Awesome. I still, I don't know. Sure, he's wonderful. Shunned I can't me. get over that me. shootout. He will never tell the story officially, uh, other than to say there is a story to be told, and it, it wasn't his fault. I have an eight-year-old like that too. It's never his fault. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I know. It's your twin's fault again. Yeah, oh, what were the odds? Who could have seen awesome. this? It's not his fault. Holy That's shit. Awesome. <laughs> Drags, have a great weekend. Keep that veterinarian's hand out of your wallet, all right? All right, guys. You have a great weekend as well. It's Darren Dreger, one of our insiders on the TELUS Insider Hotline. It's not my fault. Right there. No. He made me do it. He took my hand and put it into the cookie jar. I, I, too. Look one at me. The shop, uh, not my fault. One of the, one of the shoveler's friends. When they were little, uh -huh. they had a fear factor challenge with a blender. Not good. That's Pinder Report material right there. Uh, no. Not my fault. <laughs> Whoa, I don't like that at all. That's taking um, it too far. Yeah, let's get back to the positive stuff. It tell us they're using world-leading technology to drive meaningful change from transforming healthcare and making our food supply more sustainable to reducing our environmental footprint and connecting Canadians in need. It's TELUS, the most giving company in the world. Let's make the future friendly. Learn more at TELUS.com slash gives back. Uh, there's no juicy trade stuff to talk about. We're not quite into the playoff matchups yet, uh, but still... I, there's a lot to be determined here. Art Ross, seeding, home ice, who's in, who's out in the East. It's five teams for two spots in the East. I'm, I'm kind of interested now that the Pittsburgh's heated up. It has become a little more engaging, I guess. The West yeah. is dialed in, and it has been maybe for a while. But I, you know what it is for me? It's the guy that's in the room with you. The roller coaster that that poor man has to to ride it's just it's, it's mind dumbing for me he's in he's out he hates fire buy sell trade keep get rid of like he's that's a lot to deal with for poor jack and the pittsburgh Bengals. yeah we're not talking about boomer he's wrestling sergeant slaughter this weekend and some yeah. weird side wrestling event some house show that's going on there but jack it lives and dies uh black and yellow black and yellow it's Steelers, it's penguins uh pirates how are we doing over there? With the Penguins, it's not as as hard because they've won. Yes. So like I'm bought in, but they've they've won three times in my life. So I'm not like, eh, if they miss here or there, I don't I'm not really care. But it, it has been, it's always up and down. And now we're we're riding this backup goalie that I've never heard of, the mm. Delkovich. Yeah. It's like Alex. the Steelers, like Mason Rudolph. That's what I was saying to you. It's like the hot hands in net now. I don't know what to think. He just wants nice things. Get in. Get in, Sid. That would be fun. And I, I was thinking about, I love just sort of thing, what, what teams could meet. If you're a division winner, you're either going to get some sad sack team like Washington or the Islanders, or you might get Tampa. Like, holy fuck, there's a big difference there. And I would think it would add so much more spice if the Penguins somehow squeaked in. I just think of like Penguins Rangers. Put Sid on Broadway in round yes. one. How fun would that be? be really good and that's like, sign why me I, up i'm in that's why i want sid to get in because yes uh, more right. than washington more than I'm, detroit yep. philly i i don't care i'm sorry like watching torts blow up is the only appeal there and washington is just the most boring hockey team in the don't league, you just feel like philly's gonna get rolled up in a playoff setting? yes i don't know why i have that instinct but i feel because like they're not nearly as good as carolina who's gonna roll them up in round one that's why yeah. or they're a wild yeah. card <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they've, they've tumbled over the last few months. We'll see. Uh, we were telling you about all the places you could get the barn burner blonde. Just a reminder. Those are our good pals at origin brewing and malting company. It's the Hilton's a fifth generation family farm out by Strathmore highest quality barley in the world for over 40 years. And they take the best of that barley to make the malt and they take the best of that malt to brew their beers. I uh, go visit the tap room in Strathmore, it's uh, got a brand new kitchen, the Origin Kitchen. Wow, how about this? Uh, buffalo chicken dip, nachos, the big pig and piglet platter. Woo! Scott Schiffner is supplying the beef. The meat is smoked by Baldwin Barbecue. I mean, this is, this is some good Alberta. Mm. Sounds play, like a place to hang out for a while, Pinder. 
Uh, August Long, that's the Strathmore Rodeo, running with the Bulls, and then we'll celebrate with a beer after or eight team or stitches or X rays. You can watch the the, the running. Of the okay, Bulls. okay. That's Sorry, I thought yeah, with a nice cold Mexican lager, perhaps, or maybe a barn burner blonde. Uh, so big shout outs to the Hilton family out there and the great beer. I'm starting to see more and more around town. So tip of the cap. And if you got a favorite liquor store or restaurant, ask them, hey, you get some origin in here? I want to try this barn burner blonde. Let her go. Uh, great clips inbox or pinder report? What are you feeling here? Because it's a Friday. Yeah, I want you to get back out there, body surfing, the and pinder, that they the get the pinder, strongman the, competition. I think we need the pinder report right now. Jacko, you ready to rock? Yeah, I agree. Let's do this. Okay, pinder reports brought to you by Village Honda. Love our our pals up at Village Honda, the defending champs of the playoff draft, no less. Uh, also, you find them up in the Northwest Auto Mall and at villagehonda.com. The Honda Civic continues to lead. The way in value, reliability, performance, the 2024 Civic received a 10 out of 10 in car and drivers, comprehensive vehicle testing, and the Civic Type R and SI 1 and 2, respectively, in the sport compact category. That is the best of the best, my friends. Check them all out at Village Honda in the Northwest Auto Mall. We start with a little afterburner. It was Pike and Kent breaking down a loss in Winnipeg. Talk about Martin Pospisil. I have a love-hate relationship with Martin Pospisil, and let me explain both sides. The love part of Martin Pospisil is the same reason I really love Matthew Kachuk when he was a plane. His bread and butter is absolutely making guys nuts, and we've seen instances this year where, you know, he's drawn a multitude of penalties by basically just being a pain in the ass, and he's also had, as of tonight, this is his third game misconduct of the year. He has already been suspended once, and the, the suspension he got was, I would argue, the, okay, start getting smart here. We saw the Department of Player Safety make an example out of uh, Matthew Kachuk when he was a rookie. I imagine you had the similar experience that a lot of us had, sort of watching him play physical, sort of like this going, oh, God, please don't do anything stupid. And Matthew Kachuk, partially because he's just a smart player, figured out where the line was. I would argue that A, Martin Pospisil has not figured it out yet, and B, Martin Pospisil has to figure it out very quickly. Interesting thoughts there, and I don't mind the Kachuk comparable. They're, they're pests. These aren't scrappers, but they, they get under your skin, and if you're vulnerable and it's your doing, they're going to punish you. Yeah, they're going to, like, they're the guys, like you said earlier, other team in the room before the game. Heads up when he's on the ice. You got to be aware when he's out there. And Pike makes a good point. He will have to figure out where the line is because they will make an example of the league. And it, yeah. At some point, yeah. I, I, I And I, I agree with Drager. I agree with you. You break down that hit. Was it completely vicious? No. I still wonder if they'll go, well, it was contact to the head or, or I'm losing the word I need, but Principal point they of contact made, is the head, yes, the elbow, like, the, and, yeah. and and I don't know. Maybe they say, "Look, that's on Josh Morris here." Maybe they say, "Marty, you could have avoided this." I, I, I don't know. This it's a five. You got kicked out of the game. It's another strike on your whether you get suspended or fined or anything else. It's yeah. it's, it's just that's four in a year. They and they've already focused on him for giving him penalties that are chintzy mm -hmm. penalties. Now they are yeah. sending a message. He will have to figure it out. The one thing we haven't noted, and we would if this was a team that was, let's say, one point on the outside of the playoffs, that five-minute major power play in a game that matters can just absolutely ruin a team. Um, you know, last night, who cares? I mean, it helps their draft position yeah, if they lose not. versus win. But you can think about a major, because it was called a minor, then bonus asked the refs to review it. I don't know that they listened to him, but they decided they would look at video, which they're allowed to do. Uh, to see if the infraction was a major, and they looked at the video and they said, "Yeah, that's a major. He's done for the game." Can you imagine that being because it was the very last minute of the second period? You start the third period in a close game, and it's a five-minute power play, and it's like, "Jesus, we needed to win, and we'd be in a playoff spot." Like that could have been huge. It's almost beneficial for the Flames that this is kind of a lost year standings-wise yeah. as Marty figures this out. Hundred percent. I I think he will. Most guys do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I said before too, if they are focusing on him too much, Conroy and the rest of the management has to go, whoa, 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 whoa. He gets yeah. to play as well. Like, yeah. It's Same rule book for him, right? Absolutely. Uh, I had an interesting takeaway from last night's game, Jack. And I know you, this website that we have. So, my biggest takeaway about last night's game, uh, it actually, it's a little game we get to play. It's called the 2024 NHL Draft Lottery Simulator. Jack, you want to give that a spin? Just click the uh, 
the sim lottery button right near the top there. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Calgary stays at eight. Hmm. Ooh, Ottawa jumped big. Ottawa up to for the one hole. They got to surrender wow. a pick in the next three years. They're not giving that one away for the uh, we didn't get the no trade list right. Let's try it again, Jack. I, we got to have some fun here. No, sim lottery. Yeah, present. Oh, San Jose, Columbus, Chicago. One more. What the hell? Sim lottery. Uh, oh, Seattle, Montreal. Nine. What's that for Calgary? See, I think Ottawa could catch Calgary. That's my hopes. Yeah, well, let's get to it. We got the Inverse standing somewhere in here, Jack. That's probably a good spot to go from there. As uh, Yeah, there we are, upside down. Sharks, boy, have they been uh, dedicated to the cause here. This is a, a really significant lead they've got in Chicago. Epic. Epic. And the lottery ball uh, chase here. Chicago looks pretty safe in the two-hole. Anaheim at three for sure. Columbus locked in at four. And I don't even know that Arizona is going to leave the five spot. There's your line for the top five. After that, it's Montreal and Ottawa. Three back of the Flames. That's it. Three measly points. I've, I've not looked at the uh, the uh, schedule for the rest of the teams, but... Mm. Uh, what we need I, is like a back-to-back -back yeah. with Ottawa and Montreal playing each other, a home-and-home, home, so somebody has to win those damn games. Go That's to overtime, right. you tricks. Oh, Three-point games. They go to overtime, even better. Yes. Get to um, seven. Get to seven. God, seven would be good. Yeah, and then Seven's you're like, well, geez, seven. Don't stop there, man. We'll get to six. Um, I, I've been last night. I actually stayed up looking at draft prospects and trying to figure out who's who in the zoo because there's a lot of Russian defensemen, which we know Craig Conroy. That's his thing. That's his kink. It's Russian defensemen, right? Sam <laughs> so, Dickinson, London. You like Sammy? He's, does he slide to them? That, that's the question. I don't know. He slid a little bit uh, in, from things that I've heard. Is his stock has slid slightly this year? Yeah, might be right in that spot. I don't know. And and uh, I, I keep hearing the Petrangelo comparable from Pike when his name gets brought up. That would be a lovely get for the organization. We wouldn't mind that. Yes. Yeah. Please. And what's interesting is that you know I'm going to one site where they've got about 20 different lists, and it's like, okay, here's Bob McKenzie's, here's Craig Buttons, here's Future Consideration Hockey, here's International Scouting, here's NHL Central Scouting, and on and on, all these different services. After Celebrini at one, like you can find guys going anywhere from two to 11, the same guy. Wow. It really is. What are you looking for? And what type of player gets Spot specific. your juices flowing? Right. Yeah. Spot specific. So like well, maybe Columbus at two says, oh God, we love this style of defenseman. And someone else is like, we love the playmaking center in the Western league. That's got 120 points. It's it's I, I think the Flames are in a really good spot here to get a very, very nice player. If they're going to pick somewhere between seven and 10. And if you are the Flames, off to the top of your head, are you going yeah. center or defenseman? If I think uh, I, I think those are their leads, yeah. I I don't know that both of them will be available at the eight hole or whatever. Um, but I just look at Mackenzie Weger's age, Rasmus Anderson's contract, and if you could get a guy that you think could be a number one for a decade, I, you have to do it. But I'd say the same thing about the center. There's just more D in this draft. So it's kind of at the victim of you're at the mercy of what's left to you after the, the picks before you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm excited for it. It's they're going to get the best player they've drafted in a long time. I'd suggest Uh schedule. Where are we at? Flames. April looks like yay. Seven left. What do they, oh my gosh. Seven left. Whew. The seasons turn like minutes, only eight more hours to go. Uh, it's, it's been a grind here to get to the end. That's a cake lyric, by the way. I don't feel like cake. Then. Kind of quirky. Oliver Shillington getting a little uh, a nod from the Calgary Flames. He is their Bill Masterton nominee for the 2023-24 season. Of course, Oliver missed 20 months while dealing with mental health issues and has returned to a significant role with the Calgary Flames. There were many days we sat in here and said, look, you can't even you put his name in pencil. There's, he may never play again. So... Uh, I think important that we recognize that he's overcome that and returned to the NHL. And I think he should get a good look for the Masterton this year. Good on you, kid. Yep. Keep good to see up. him back. That's all we can say. Just sign Chris Tanov on July 1 and put those two back together. Away we go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, okay. Playoffs. If they started today by points, here's what it would look like. Dallas, LA. Love it. Colorado, Winnipeg. Love it. Canucks, 
Preds, not sure how I feel about it. Man. Vegas, Edmonton, oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Out east, Boston, Tampa's unreal. Florida, oh, Toronto, Boston sensational. Be crap in their pants, wouldn't they? Islanders, Rangers, Rhett. Love it. Oh, oh. Please. And I really, I couldn't care for Carolina sweeping That's, the Flyers. No. That's snoozeville. Pretty good. Two weeks in a day, we get this. It's going to be some something good stuff close out to there. Woo. Woo. We're excited. We're excited. Uh, tonight, what are we looking at? One of those uh, games does feature two of the top teams in the league clashing. Colorado, second half of a back-to-back. They've got Edmonton. They beat up Minnesota in Minnesota last night, 5-2 with their backup in and Nona Chushkin. They'll travel to Edmonton to face the Oilers tonight. Oilers are on the first half of a back-to-back. They, of course, have Calgary here tomorrow. That's a juicy matchup. We'll revisit that later with DoorDash. No doubt about that one. Anything else you see interesting? Philly Buffalo's got some implications, Rhett. Not so much for the Sabres, although They're they could screw off far. in the inverse standings with a win. Yeah. I like that. That's right. Keep winning Sabres and stay out of reach of the Flames. So, And not that it's of any interest at all, Vegas beating up on Arizona. Is there more shit coming out about Arizona? Are they? They released some very highly produced video that suggests they're going to purchase this land and build a little complex with a big rink. Um, They also said they were going to win a referendum in Tempe. I'm done believing what the Arizona Coyotes tell us is going to happen. I still think Salt Lake's got my money for where they end up in the next two years. Um, But yeah, they're going to try. And you know it's a, it's an owner that's got a great reputation in the city and has a ton of goodwill and well, people want to work with loves them. them. People want to do business with them. Yeah, people want to work. Yeah, with no them. way that fails. Can you, if this gets captioned, can we use the sarcastic font for that? It's too late. Yeah, we'll get back on. That. I'm not sure how that works. We'll move uh, now. Boomer and Frank. I think they did the jacket handoff yesterday. Very emotional as uh, Frank had left his jacket in Jasper and then in Boom's truck, and then Boomer came to Toronto with his wife's jacket instead of Frank's because it's blind, and it's a cluster. I think the jacket got returned yesterday. Those two came together and gave the world's biggest bear hug of all time. They were so excited. And look at this. A 4.7 magnitude earthquake shakes the Philadelphia area. Goodness, guys. Jeez. That is huge. Earthquake and and, and tsunami? What, or what was the earthquake in... Uh, who are the natural disasters? Remember that tag team? Earthquake. Oh, yeah. They're big boys. Anyway, uh, yeah. keep your eyes out if you're in Philly this weekend at WrestleMania for those two. The Silver Fox and the Boom Cat. Have we heard from the Boom Cat? Or? He's sending videos of people okay. wearing Ric Flair robes and Love people it. playing music to the Bret Hart theme song. He's, he's doing WrestleMania. And he's flying during the eclipse. He's crazy. I would never do that. Yeah, flying during the earthquake, probably a better move, right? <laughs> as, long as, <laughs> as long as the runway where you land is good. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's typhoon, not tsunami. Typhoon, earthquake and typhoon. Great. God damn it. Jack! It's close. Jack wasn't alive when they wrestled, but we're mad at him. Have you guys ever been like in an earthquake? No, no. I'm trying to avoid it. I, have, I had in Mexico when I was younger. It was scary as hell. Oh, really? Where were you? What was the magnitude? We were at a wedding. I think it was like a six something. Jeez. Ooh. Straight to the bathtub. It was like five, six in the morning. My mom was running all over the place. She was on the balcony of like the 10th floor. Oh, my God. Bad spot to be, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Be, yeah, but... yeah. I mean, oof. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want to. I don't even like going down this road. I mean, I'm happy to show you videos of people biting, have their arms bitten off by crocodiles. I don't want to talk about earthquakes. I, I don't like no. this at all. Mm-hmm. Bridges, buildings, no earthquakes. No, 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 no. Do nothing about that. You want to get your arm nothing. bit by an alligator? That's up to you. You know what we need to do? We need to change the topic and get to our new favorite human on earth, the Kiwi living in Calgary, yes. who's betting tens of thousands of dollars on blackjack every day. Let's go to Tim Dotnacki. It's day fifty-eight. Going to blackjack and betting ten cents for every Instagram follower I've got. There is a whopping four hundred and fifty thousand. Of you fiends in here now, an extra 24,000 of you today. That means a $45,000 blackjack hand coming right up. Alrighty, for the 450,000 of you legends with us, we have a $45,000 bet on the line today. The asshole is puckering. This is a substantial bet. Our dealer is quite a menacing character, to say the least. I need you to be good to me, sir. Let's go 10 10s for me. Make it six on your end. We see eight. 
and a 919. 919 via five. Oh, I don't know rate. if that's a double down. I'm going to stand. <laughs> I am going to stand and take the 19. Good decision to fuck off the side bits. Go low for me. Tinny, 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 tinny. Oh, it's a push! You wouldn't no. fucking read about it! Oh, no way! Oh, back-to-back -back Alabama specials. Oh, my God, that is ridiculous. I will see you tomorrow, and I guess we will be bending even more. <laughs> it was snowing yesterday. Did you see the snow at the beginning of the video? Snow, yeah. He, and he was wearing his flames toque, I think. Jack, can we yeah. go back to the beginning? Look, what a, look at this legend. Look at this. Nah, that's a tough one. You got 919. Now, if that's a $5 bet, I think I doubled there. But uh, And when a it's 10 came 45, up. Didn't, <laughs> didn't a 10 <laughs> come up? Uh, well, yeah, let's play it again. If he doubles, again, what, Jack. If he doubles, what happens there? Of you fiends in here now, an extra 24,000 of you today. That means a $45,000 blackjack hand. Coming right up. All righty. For the 450,000 of you legends with us, we have a $45,000 bet on the line today. The asshole is puckering. This is a substantial bet. Our dealer is quite a menacing character, to say the least. I need you to be good to me, sir. Let's go 10 tens for me. Make it six on your end. We see eight. And a nine, nine, 919 9, via five. Doubles, I don't know if that's here? a double down. I'm going to stand. I am going to stand and take the 19. Good decision oh, to fuck off the attack. side bets. Go low for me. Tenny, tenny. Oh, it is a 10 too. So he's no. at 19. No, because he that flips was the king. Already, that, that was, was already down. That was dealt. Oh, okay. So this is a flip. Thank you. Yep, next one, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it's got to be tenny, a four. Tenny, tenny, tenny. Yeah, it's a four. Yeah, that's no good. So he oh, would have been 13. <laughs> and we don't know what the, the next one okay. You wouldn't fucking read about it. Oh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and he calls it an Alabama special because it's a, it's a push, and that's a sister kisser. Like a tie. Kissing your sister, Alabama. I try not to. I don't think you have a sister, do you? <laughs> well, you do, actually. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so that's our boy Tim.Naki. See this awesome. face? Oh. Don't tell Boom. <laughs> okay. Anyone of you? Everyone here. Don't say a word. Tuesday. <sighs> uh, construction site, Brett. Uh, sad to see this old place go, but it was a dump and they're building something way nicer. Let's have a look as they tear down this house. A lot of memories, I'm sure. Hope they got all the jewelry and valuables out of that house, Rhett. And that dude with the fluorescent shirts coming in. Oh, oh my God! You can only watch that uh, the first time once. My God. Jeez. People. That was like the harness on the bridge. Remember the bridge, the drawbridge we did earlier this week? That's, I think Brett was gone for that. Do you know what that's like? That was like the the scoreboard in the, the Sabres arena. Oh, yeah, that's right. When was that? Were you there? Were you Early gone? Early 90s. Or, or, pardon me, the mid-90s. Huh? The Marine Midland was, Arena. Yeah, it was Something like that. Before I was there. Yeah. Oh, one day, boom, Jumbotron falls right on the ice. Like just before morning skate, I think, too. Or just after. Like it was. Oof. Uh, this one's called Bike Idiot. Let's see how it goes. All of them. Yeah, this is fucking. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah, the cameraman is not impressed, right? That's a bad sign. Right, this won't work. I see, I see no hope here. Even the guy going doesn't want to do it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's not ideal. Um, no, we don't need to see the Thanks, Jack. Nope. Nope. Well, maybe just stop at midair. Then we don't have to see the impact again. Yeah, there's no way you can land that. You're absolutely fucked. Okay. Next. Let's go to. <laughs> Dude. What are you doing? What are you Be doing? Better. Be better. When, do the, when does the male brain fully develop? 24? 
24, I think. Yeah. Jack's pushing it, but. Uh, this one is called Punched. What about you? You could drop me, but I think I'm too conditioned, so just Bruv, find out. Hey, hey, whenever you're ready, brother. <laughs> oh! <laughs> one more time. Is that real? Let's find out. Hey, hey whenever you're ready, brother. <laughs> oh, that hurt. But your neck could be sore. I feel like the uh, the pregame meeting on that one did not go well. They didn't clarify exactly what everyone's role was in that. Um, I got a skateboard, two snakes, and two crocodiles. What do you want first? Let's go skateboard and I get to the animals. Oh, they're always yeah, the cutest. we'll get to the animals, crackers at the end here. Okay, good. Uh, skateboard, Jack. We'll go there. Hmm. One sec. It's loading. Oh, yeah, oh. sorry. I got them out of order. That's my fault. Oh, I did want skateboard next to bike idiots and punched. So I should have numbered them differently. Uh, now your, your kid skateboard or no? No. This guy is having a great time. Gun's gone. Look at the day. What a time to be alive. Ooh. Oh my God. No. That stupid cat. That stupid ginger snap cat. Jace. Hate cats. Ah, so you can't, a dog would never do this, Rhett. A dog would run beside you, wagging its tongue out, being like, "Hey, buddy, this is fun." A cat sewers them. What an you asshole! What? You know what, though? Skaters are stupid. <laughs> I mean, that looks fun, but it doesn't look smart. I kind of give you that. Look safe. Yeah. Like at some point, no. he's there's going to be a pothole or it's, it's going to, it's not ending well. Now our first animal portion today is about an exotic, uh, a summer trip. You could take your family on right to Manitoba where there's a oh. really nice collection of uh, snakes. Canada has the biggest concentration of snakes in the world where you can be surrounded by thousands of snakes. And here's oh, where snakes. it's located. The snake dens of Narciss in Manitoba has thousands of red-sided garter snakes emerge and mate for the last three weeks into May. And during this time, you can walk along three kilometers of trails to see the snakes gather in four massive pits below you from observation platforms. I personally will not be visiting the snake dens, but Coward. if it's something that interests you, this is the perfect time to do it in Manitoba. I'm going to avoid. I don't like Manitoba to begin with. So I'm definitely going to, not going to participate in that event. Now, what if I told you we put Dean in an RV and we tricked him? We told him we were doing the bandit run, but we just took him to the snake pit. So you in then? I'll come video that. I'll come video <laughs> that. I can, I can, yeah, okay. I can come video that. I'm gonna look. Now, this is a snake in Australia, and it looks like. He ate something he shouldn't eat. So he, they're, they're, the people are helping the snake. I don't know where they found it, but they knew something wasn't right. Oh, gross. So they got his mouth open. And uh, that is a tool used by the veterinarians to remove something, Rats. Do you have any wagers on what we might have in there? A golf club. And that's what Jack said, actually. Why do people think golf clubs? Are we eating metal things, snakes? They're dumb. Animals. I hate That's it. it. Just oh. looks like a golf club, right? Does I mean it's got to be long and, and narrow. I get that. Um, mm, three iron, yum. Oh, poor thing's not. Happy. Oh, it's it's blue. It's baby blue. Whatever it is. Oh, it's not. Uh oh, broke it. There we got. Watch the fangs now. Careful here. Is it the shoveler's uh, bikini? What do we got here? That, that baby blue. Oh. Oh, buddy, come on now. Is this uh, dead or passed out? I think they just got it sedated, which is uh, a move. I wouldn't want to do that uh, for... I do not like it's snakes. If it's dead, you just leave whatever's in there in there. Looks... Yeah, do you want to pull it out? Just let go for a second. Yeah, just let go for a second. Here we are. Here we are. Give her a good pull there, Sheila. I see a tag on it. Is this the shoveler's belongings? Might be. Uh, you guys were there a while ago. Make up removal. Oh! Oh. oh, it's a beach towel oh, rat. Hooray! Oh, I got my towel back. You're not even grossed out. Okay. You're not even grossed out. Oh. Not even grossed out. Australians are built differently, man. 
Uh, two Crocs. Let's find out what's happening with our first. You know what? We're going to, I believe the first is a guy that's teaching people about crocodiles. They're not Labradors, Rhett. Not Labradors. Yeah. He swims with them. He talks to them. Um, but they're not loving. Friends. Yeah. Back they, but that's the thing. They're kind of friends, but they're kind of not. Here, he'll explain. Hi, big fella. How you doing, buddy? So a lot of people see videos like that and they're like, oh, well, it's because he knows you. And and yes, he does know me. He knows who I am. He knows who George is. George is on the camera right now. He knows who each of us are and that we are not the same person. And so he'll treat each one of us differently based on the fact that he does know us. But the fact that he knows you doesn't mean that he's like your friend or that he's tame or that he won't bite you because he absolutely still will. He's tried to bite me many, many times. So. He knows you does not mean it is safe. People often say that as if it somehow precludes all danger. Come, come here. So like he knows his name, he comes when he's called, he knows who I am, everything like that. But at the same time, just cause he knows you like, yeah, he knows me and he will still absolutely bite me. He would still absolutely eat me if I do something stupid in here. And uh, yeah, you always want to be very, very careful. Like when I touch on the side, he's still snappy. And yeah, that is a reflex. And even if he knows it's me, He'll still bite you for it. That's the thing. If I just put my hand there and I did move out of the way, he's going to grab my hand and he's not going to be like, oh, I'm way, sorry. Idiot. He will probably grab it and then death roll, rip it off and swallow it right in front of my face because he's an alligator, not a Labrador guy. So, okay. Right. Okay. Well, we're learning there. I hope Boom's not swimming with any of those buggers in Philly. Well, they, they, I'd see, I just don't know how you... I'd like him to explain what you need to do to get them to not bite off your arm versus the things that would get them I, to bite off. I've got some answers for you. Okay. Stay the out of their way. Right. Now, is the shoveler big on paddling sports? Is she no, in the summer? It. Nope. Because I was thinking about this trip. I mean, you see some wildlife, you get out there, you maybe get a bit of a workout with the paddle. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh, Blake. <laughs> That's a lot. This is not the snake breeding place. This is the alligator or crocodile breeding place. Yeah, yes, this, is, this is disgusting. Jeez. Goodness. I think there's no more food left in that river. There can't be. Look you know, at all. I'm going fish are not swimming down there. Well, Jeez. That's your Friday edition of the Pinder Report, Rat. I'm sorry, and you're welcome. That's why you live in Calgary. Yeah, for all the complaining that uh, people do about it snowing this time of year. Yeah, I don't like the no snow, crocodiles. but I really don't like being bitten in the ass by a croc. Yeah, or having your arm bitten off and then the death spiral with the uh -huh. twist, twist, twist. Watching it rip. Oh, underwater. wow. Yeah. Speaking of the Calgary weather, it's as if the Honda Civic was designed for the city of Calgary. It continues to lead the way in value, reliability, and performance. And, of course, uh, that CRV. Yes, it's the unpredictable weather. It's great with that. No matter the conditions, the CRV sits atop the pack amongst compact SUVs. You can feel confident behind the wheel of your CRV. As Honda has included a plethora of driver safety features that come standard. It's a CRV day out there, isn't it? Not for you. You you need something with the top that comes off. I'm not. You know what? I'd love to have the CRV, but I'm not driving anywhere because I just I can walk. Across. You're you're going to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. You need an umbrella. That's you don't need a vehicle. When you come back to Calgary, Village Honda, Northwest Automobile, VillageHonda.com. Let your automotive adventures begin there. Uh, we've got a great clips inbox to get to. We've got to do Betway. We've got to look at the menu for DoorDash. Let's get into the inbox. If you want to take part, you already have emailed us at great clips inbox at flamesnation.ca, or you can just use the hashtag. Great clips inbox out uh, and have a little comment in the comments. How how is this going? I think we're a week three or four with the great clips inbox. I, I I've enjoyed some of the questions and there's only been one or two really dumb ones. I've been okay with it. It's it's much better than when I started radio stuff and I'd say let's have callers. And yeah, callers no, that's call no, don't ever bad idea. You need to sift through this. You get some good questions, some, mm -hmm. some hard-hitting things, some light-hearted things. It's wonderful. So, again, uh, great clips inbox at flamesnation.ca. Submit those today for next week or use the hashtag great clips inbox in the comments. With more than 4,400 hair salons throughout the U.S. and Canada, great clips is the world's largest hair salon brand and the official hair salon 
of the NHL. They're locally owned and operated, open seven days a week. And we know your time's valuable. Don't be messing around, waiting in line. Use the Great Clips check-in app. See the wait times on your phone. And also, you can sign up for the Ready Next text alert, which will let you know when you're 15 minutes away. On you go. Arrive. Empty seat ready. Let's go. It just makes sense. How are we not? How, why haven't we doing it like this for 20 years? Uh, for more information, greatclips.com. Great Clips. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, we'll dive into the inbox. Let's see what uh, the very, very enlightened and curious viewers of the program have for us this week. This one comes from Christy. Hello, gentlemen. I thoroughly enjoy reading about hockey history, chronological accounts, and biographies. However, the game ranks as my all-time favorite. That would be, I believe, Ken Dryden's book. What hockey publications have left their indelible mark on you? That from Christy. Peter Puck. Your big reader. Peter Puck. Peter Puck was a good one. It was a banger. I honestly, so that would have been uh, when I was little. You. It was a Peter Puck book. It was awesome. Uh, Peter Puck uh, was doing national TV broadcasts in the States in the 80s. He was teaching people about the sport. They needed help. So they, I've they sure did. I read a, a lot of. I read. Uh, Whose was it? Was it Dave Semenko's book? I, think I would recommend in terms of uh, really, really riveting, interesting stories. Stephen Brunt did one with Bobby Orr. Mm -hmm. Stephen Brunt also did one with Jordan Tutu. That's incredible. And I would say it's not for everyone. And I, you'll understand where the conclusions will point you. But the there was a New York Times writer who wrote a book on Derek Bugard and how things ended horribly that's i know that's one you're not necessarily keen on reading is it's it's not a happy ending yeah i like a little happier in that one that, that doesn't sound there's a book about uh, i think dryden wrote that has my buddy steve montador in it as well oh but nice talking a lot about problems with kind of how things unfold for some guys yeah all right lots of good books out there um what's dean's got a couple up here berkey's law that's brian burke's one Kelly Rudy's book up on the on the shelf here. Theo's written a bunch. Uh, and lots of books up there. Jeez. And Pikes, of course, there on the go. clock, the Calgary Flames at the NHL draft. Pike bomb. Very thorough. Like nuts thorough. Pikey. Impressive, impressive research done. Uh, next one. Let's see. I'm going to click the down button. We'll move to the next email. Hey guys, I love the show. I'm wondering if we could uh, go to Betway and get some odds on Aussie Brad. His videos usually mention kangaroos, uh, see in the Northern Territories, and he drinks beers. I'm thinking an over under of 0.5 on the beers and ruse, an over under of nine and a half on the see you next Tuesdays. Personally, I'd wrap that up into a nice little parlay and take the over on all three. I would. Definitely take the over. He's going over on that beer one. Unders for cowards yeah. if it's an Aussie Brad. The, the, the line's set too low. Uh, the first video we sent us alone, I think we're probably around 15 to 20 C in the Northern Territories. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It was, he's got some consistency there. Yeah, and that's coming in from Tyler, who uh, is looking forward to those odds being released on Betway. I'll see what we can do. We'll talk to some people there. Talk to some people. It's been a little while. I'm worried. No, nah, don't quiet worry about him. That there. guy, you kidding me? He's making the world a better place. Yeah, or he's in jail. I don't know which, but uh, he's been absent. Which makes the world a, a better place. It might. It might. Yeah, you could argue that's the same thing. I don't know, but I would say this. If we start a GoFundMe next year to fly him over to something, I don't think we'd have a tough time getting that uh, goal or target reached. Yeah, People I, love Ozzy Brad. That's a great idea. They really want Aussie Brad. He would have fit right in at the Mullet Arena. I want to go to Aussie Brad, though. That's going to be um, tougher to do. But yeah. All right. All right. I'm not saying no. Look, Dan and Joe want to go back to Australia and do that again? We're in. We're in. We're in. Uh, next. It's so our last email. Now, Jack, if anyone in the comments is using the hashtag Great Clips Inbox, you can add them to the queue as well. Pinder, it's late in the game, and you need some speed on the base, path, base paths. You've got an unfortunate injury, and you need a pinch runner. Your bench has three players on it. It's Kirk, Vogelbach, and Boomer. 
Who are you pinch running with? Oh, geez. Catching strays in Philly. Uh, sincerely, I hit dingers, Tyler. <laughs> That's Big Al that hits dingers, Tyler. Big Al hits dingers, Tyler. Bill Al hits dingers. We saw it yesterday. Um, Vogelbach, Kirk, or Boomer is a pinch runner. We need speed on the base. There is no speed on the base pass there. I don't have a... Vogelbach's a hard no. Kirk, it's not pretty, but it's... <laughs> It's Boomer or Kirk. I, where are you going? I'm going with Boom just because I want to see if he can run. I don't know. It's if a great he can. point. Even if he fails, we've at yeah. least got a viral highlight. It's Boomer for sure. What? Yeah. Great if point he here. has success, finally, you, you know, you've, you good. Get out there and smile and celebrate him. Carry him off the field on your shoulders if you can get him up there. It's a great spot for him to. All of his jealousy yeah. issues will be done. He'll be famous yeah. finally. He won't have this chip on his shoulder talking to you because you're famous oh, and stuff. Good. Because. You will have made it finally. And um, yeah, I'm just pulling up Daniel Vogelbach's card. He's listed at six foot. Do you want to guess the next? Let's do prices right style. So there's, three, there's three numbers in his weight. Guess the first number in his weight. Two. Ding. Eight. Now. Eh. Six. Eh. Nine. Eh. You missed one. Five. Seven. Seven. And it's nice and round. 270. 270. Six foot. 270. He needs Dion Dawkins' sweatsuit or whatever the hell he was wearing. (laughs) That or a surgery. I don't know. He's a large human, but he can hit a baseball. Good for him. He hit stingers. Who cares? Yeah, he's basically... Big Al was inspired by... The Vogel bod. That, that was maybe the inspiration for Big Al. Yes. It was leaned out nicely. Good work, Big Al. You're looking great. Proud of you, bud. Uh, let's go to the comments, Jack, from the uh, hashtag Great Clips Inbox. Rhett, Pinder are comfortable. Rhett and Pinder, are you comfortable with where the game is today? And if you could, what change would you like to make? So I'm assuming it's rule book or something else around the league. You're commissioner for a day. What do you want to do to change things? I would change it to three points for a win. Every every game's worth three. Every so a regulation three. win would get three, and overtime win you'd get two. The loser would get one. I don't mind That's that right. at all. It's That's more what fair. I, would do. I like Makes that. Way more sense. I would move Arizona to Quebec City. Screw you, Bettman. They're never going to do it. <laughs> There's a million reasons they won't do it. It's not good for business, but boy, that'd be fun. Be great and I would say I like the full two minute power play. Red. Screw yep. as many times as you want. Take a penalty. You're, you're in the box. Serve it. Jack, do you have a rule you'd like to change? Mandatory penguins in the final? What do you <laughs> no? I think I'm adding the play in round. Oh. I like that. One game. You don't like the play in? <sighs> I hate it. Really? Really? Yes. I can't believe you have that. I just feel like it's getting pushed. Like this is an agenda that's getting pushed. Like, is there anything better than the first two rounds of the NHL playoffs in sport? Like it's a tough, tough in this country with hockey is the sport we love. Like, I don't know if there's anything better than that. Why are we fixing something that's not broken? Oh, you want a team to be extra tired going into this? No, it's a fun game. Who's the nine seed that's been screwed? Who is this great team that couldn't be the top eight in their conference that we, oh, the tragedy they couldn't get in? Like last year's Flames? No. I would love, you know, but it, it. It, But out east, if you had Philly and Pittsburgh for a one game play in, be pretty fun. I'd watch it. You'd definitely watch it. And, and if they excited. tie in points get- at the end of the season, I would say have a play in game. Don't go to tiebreakers like regulation wins and shit. To have okay. a play in game. I'm in for that. Sure. Um, and look, I don't think it would be bad. I would watch it, and I understand the league would make more money doing it, but the first round is so good. We, what are we doing here? I don't think it changes the first round. That's my rant. Anyway. Yeah, you really don't like that. No, he's thought yeah, about like, it, too. Everyone's like, you know what's wrong with the NHL playoffs? You're like, yeah, nothing. I don't know. I just <laughs> It en- ends in June. That's what I had the problem I've for en- me. I've enjoyed the NBAs. Like, this year, yes. it's going to be... The Pelicans, the Kings, the Lakers, and the Golden State Warriors. I'm totally with you on the NBA. It makes sense. The NBA's first and second round aren't interesting. That is true. 
And so what they've done is they've made they've they've helped what they have. The NHL is not the NBA. The NHL is a phenomenal first two rounds. So I just don't see like an in season tournament. I'm I'm curious about if you had a seven team Canadian tournament in December and January every year. I think that'd be unreal. You come up with some maple beaver trophy for the winner. I'm in, but I just yeah, I, I think don't that's like hokey. But see, anyway. yeah, I think that I I did not like the mid season tournament at all. It's just in North America we don't have the context for it. In Europe, this is an incredibly normal thing to do. But whatever it is. I, I'm not pushing hard for that so much as I just think the playoffs are so good. What, what, how did we begin on trying to tweak them? Anyway, rant. You think RJ cuts that, clips it? Mm. Don't know. Uh, any other in the great clips inbox, Jack? Any others? Use that hashtag. Question. What is the most important move the Flames need to make this offseason? Win the, can they win the tra- the lottery? Yes, they can. <laughs> okay, well, now, that's not go. a move you can make. That is something that happens to you. <laughs> Craig Connor moving up. Press the button you're, to to you're win the lottery. Up. You're moving up. I don't. Oof, I, now, Craig, just remember to win the lottery. Okay, come back with that first overall pick. I would say you've got to like, that that pick's going to be in the top ten. You, you've got to you got to hit on that pick. But we won't know for a few years if you do or you don't. One of the things that you will know right away and that you have to make a hard decision on is what do you do with Jacob Markstrom? That's that's a move that you have to be very sure you're making the right one, Rhett. Yeah, that's probably the most important piece left right now. I was having a hard time coming up with one, but that one actually makes a lot of sense. It's going to get some Vesna love. He's coming off a monster year. You have Dustin Wolf that looks like he's ready to be in the NHL for a full season in some sort of capacity, whether that's a one, a one, a, a one B or a two, we don't know. Uh, and I don't know that you won't have some teams desperate for goaltending. It's a soft market for a free agency for goalies. LA Kings have no one under contract. Maybe their goaltending would suck in round one. Oh, get a haul. Big decision. So that's the move they got to make. Yeah. I don't see any others. Well, there's going to be lots of others, but that's the biggest one. Jack, I'll give you two more. There's no more. Jack, right. no more. We are We're done. Done, here. Jack. That is the great clips inbox, my friends. Don't be stuck waiting around some salon. Get that uh, ready next text alert by using the great clips check in app. You'll be able to see wait times and also sign up for them to text you when you're 15 minutes away. And away you go. Off you go. For more information, go to greatclips.com. Great clips. It's going to be great. It's the official hair salon of the NHL. What's the weekend until you fly tomorrow or you change? Yeah, your back time? tomorrow. The back tomorrow. What are you doing? So Leaving good. on a Saturday. How was the music festival? I haven't gone. It's today started. The reggae, the ragu festival. Not right. It's country. Oh, geez. Old Dominion. Really? I don't know who's all there. The shoveler knows. There's a bunch of bands. Shoveler got the VIP passes. She's there. up on stage Bird. shaking it. Making money. Let's uh, get to our Betway bets of the day. Betway! That's a responsible way with Betway, our gaming partner tonight in the NHL. Lots going on. Uh, one banger game I'm focused on. It is the Oilers hosting the Avs. Avs have been unbelievable of late. Oilers just okay and have struggled against the top teams in the league. But they get the Avs on the second half of a back-to-back tonight. Avs at plus money. You might not see that again the rest of the year. I'm going to jump on it. And I just, I like the idea of a little bit of uh, nerves developing in Edmonton here. They got pumped by Dallas, although it probably was a close game. And then I I love this. Uh, I'm going to the West Coast Hiss Hip Hop route. Nate Dogg and Dr. Dre both score plus 250. Kennan and Dreisaitl. Love it. Yeah. Just hit the East Side and the LBC. Both score plus 250 for me. Both more than capable. Yeah, they're good at that. Jack, no penguins today, no bet, I'm guessing? No, but I do have the parlay that helps the penguins. Oh! Sabres over the Flyers, Hurricanes over the Capitals, Rangers over the Red Wings, plus 435. I don't mind that. Loves the parlay. Loves the parlay. It's ballsy, Jackie, but I love it. And you missed on the, the Sid goal last night, but... Yeah, it was close, too, that first one. But Ovi did score. And they won. So you two for three on two it. Two for three. It was so close. they give you two thirds of that or no? Okay. Yeah. Parlay. 
I just bet those all on their own. All right. Whatever you want, man. Uh, check this out. We got a QR code for you from Betway. If you haven't signed up and you're thinking, oh, I'll get around to it, now's the time. Zap that. Open a new account with Betway. And if you lose your first bet, you can get that money back up to 200 bucks to wager on other sports and other games that you love. No minimum bet required. Uh, your first bet, you lose it. They're going to give you all that cash back up to $200. Zap the QR code. Claim that bonus and have a little more fun. Spice up your life. Betway, our partners here on the Barn Burner. Uh, do we have time for sports or are we just straight beach bods today? Just flexing and what do you rubbing mean? oil on. What sports? Are you saying yeah, we got five? some games. Is it too hot in the middle of the day or is it just right? It's, I don't know if I should feed you a matinee baseball game or not. It's toasty. The boys have been at the beach now for a couple hours. They're probably going to need some downtime, maybe yes. throw a couple innings on. Okay, well, let's get to that. It is our DoorDash. What's on the menu? Download the app, and it, with your first order on DoorDash, we've got a deal for you. Enter the promo code NATION25. You'll get 25% off your order and free delivery in Canada. Sorry, Red, when you're back. And, uh, yeah, you probably would have used that already anyway. Yeah, it's too late. Uh, Check that out. We'll ask you what your what your food is. But on the menu, sports wise, for DoorDash, Jays and Yankees, eleven oh five. They're already underway in the Bronx. Jays coming off an off day. Uh, Schneider back in the lineup. That's that's a big thing. After he hit that walk off home run, they benched him. Hmm. They uh, they benched him. Zero zero top of three. That's where we're at in that one. So still some baseball left for you, Rhett. Tonight, Colorado at Edmonton. That is a seven p.m. start from the cultural capital and the women's final four goes NC state and Carolina at five Connecticut and Iowa, the one seeds at seven 30, the ladies tournaments got people buzzing. Have you heard that down there? People raving about the, the women's tournament. Caitlin Clark got everybody wound Whoa. up. Yes. She's a weapon. Just Apparently shooting the lights so. up. Love it. That is what's on the menu for DoorDash. What are you ordering rat? If you had to. Oh, you know what? I want we'll get it delivered to the beach. There's this great little Mexican place that has the best nachos I've ever had. Excuse me? The best nachos you've ever had. Ever. You know how most nachos we complain about all the time? Not yeah. enough cheese and the chips Not are crispy. This is beyond it's it's a it's a nacho chip cheese sandwich. It's oh. unbelievable. The only issue I have is I have to beat my children off of it because they attack it like wild yes, dingoes. Like vultures. Yes. Yeah. Get out of here. Ah. You just have to order two. Man, Get that DoorDash to the beach and uh, just, I'll hey guys, look, I got this over here and then you have yours waiting over there. I should have had DoorDash right now. I'm gonna show if you do it now, it's probably going to meet you at the beach because we're almost done the show. Wouldn't be the worst idea. Nope. DoorDash, it's not just restaurants, pharmacies, groceries, flower shop, Whatever you want, DoorDash can deliver it for you. Why leave the house? Have it dropped off at your front door with default contactless delivery. Love that. Also, there's Double Dash. Hey, uh, pharmacy, then need uh, the grocery store, then come with one delivery charge for both visits. Love that. DoorDash, get the app. And again, Nation uh, 25, your promo code for your first order 25% off over $15 and free delivery. Welcome. The DoorDash. That's what they're saying to you. Almost done, Rhett. You're back for the playoff draft. That means you're back in two weeks. It is two weeks tonight. We had another two teams sign up yesterday. We are into the final few teams. Uh, if you would like to be a sponsor or purchase a team, email Eden at kidsportcalgary.ca. These are the final few teams we've got for the Barnburner playoff draft. It was an absolute banger last year. The most fun we had an event Maybe uh, in the history of this podcast. Great event. Phoenix was fun, but then those guys got those wacko charges on their credit cards from the, woo. so that didn't happen at the Gray Eagle. They're not doing that to you. It's going to be a blast. Tables of eight are $1,500. Kids Sport giving you a tax receipt for your charitable donation to keep the kids playing sports. We love that. And uh, doors at six, mingling, little drink, little chat. I kick in. High kicking, high fiving, snacking. 
Uh, and uh, we'll laugh at who you select uh, as compared to Pinder's best player available, which we will have on the screen. Going to be a lot of fun. It's brought to you by our good friends at McLeod Law, the great eagle, and in support of Kidsport. Eden, E-D-E-N, at kidsportcalgary.ca for the final few teams. Get your buddies. Going to be a ton of fun. The day the season ends, you're watching hockey. Two days later, you're watching playoffs. The day in the middle... That's what we've got, guys. This is the window. Okay? Yep, see, we'll see you there. See you there. Just got the text. We're at the nacho place. We're at the nacho place. <laughs> really? Really? Okay. Well, we got to get out of here then. Finally, uh, you're repping the barn burner gear, the shirt. People are saying, where do I get barn burner gear? Well, you go to nationgear.ca. And yes, we do finally have the barn burner hoodies and t-shirts in stock. We're also going to give you 20% off between now and the end of the week. So until Sunday, if you need to do some shopping, you got birthdays coming up, maybe you got a vacation, you want to cut the sleeves off, make this uh, a tank top like Jack wears to work, you can do that too. 20% off all regular season merch at nationgear.ca. And if you're getting a bunch done, any orders over 200 bucks, free shipping. Merch madness, only till Sunday nationgear.ca to get your barn burner gear. Enjoy the beach. Enjoy your nachos. I'm going to layer up with the, whatever, the sunblock. Go get a suntan, some nachos, a couple yes. margaritas. And I was going to say, could you just please, for me, just a couple stiff oh, Cadillac margaritas? 100%. Oh. I'll have them down within five minutes. You're doing the Lord's work. Thank you, Rhett, for being there for us. I just do my best. (laughs) We'll see you on Monday. Thanks. Adios. See you, buddies.